Godot's 4.2 release is right around the corner. <laughs> and with it comes a lot of cool stuff. So let's don't waste any more time and get directly into the video. Oh, one small thing. I picked stuff that is either breaking or a really big change. So just like in the what's new in Godot 4.3 video, just because your proposal slash pull request does not appear here, it's not trash. Number 1. Fixed scene corruption when moving files. Moving around the scene in Godot 4.1 was pretty much a death sentence, as the moved around scene could get corrupted quite often. OX Tyler and Jordi Fell addressed this with multiple fixes that hopefully eliminate this problem forever. I've been using the beta version of Godot 4.2 for a while now, and I've never had issues with this. Number 2. Better normal information in raycasts. Aligning an object based on the normals you received from a raycast could result into a snappy alignment. Because of that, Precision Renderer introduced a way to use barycentric coordinates, whatever that means, which results in way less snappier normals. Number 3. Animation Mixer Base Class for Animation Player and Animation Tree Both the Animation Player and Animation Tree now inherit from the same base class, the Animation Mixer. This is mostly an internal refactor by Tokugat Lab, but it also comes with some nice. nice goodies, such as for example deterministic blending. Number 4. Improvements to 2D and 3D navigation. You can now finally bake 2D navigation meshes just like you could with 3D ones for a while now, thanks to Smix8. They also updated the tile map to use the new navigation baking, and they made nav mesh baking in general multi-threaded. Number 5. Time map performance. The time map got some big performance improvements. Grout made changes to the y sort algorithm, so expect a performance increase of for example from 60 to 800 fps in larger scenes. Thanks to them, the time map now uses only quadrants for rendering, whatever that means. But I don't care, because there's a performance improvement of roughly 2.8 times. Number 6. Per tile flipping and transposing. You can now, thanks to Kobe Y, flip tiles and tile patterns in the tile map editor while placing them. Number 7. Added editor icons. Meow Pio Pio added a lot of new editor icons. For example, the box and the spear toggle to toggle between box and spear preview in the material preview now has a nice outline. There are also some nice new icons for the 3D texture classes, some new ones for the placeholder ones, an icon for the undo redo class, icons for the file access and dear access class, as well as an icon for the performance object, and one for the shader include class. Number 8. Code editor improvements. Thanks to GMB462, you can now fold code into regions, which greatly improves readability in large scripts. I use this all the time and it's so freaking useful. If you ever had issues with the common toggle behavior in Godot's script editor, iWeek7 may have fixed these. Thank yous. Number 9. Blender style transform improvements. Godot has had Blender style transforms for a while now. Our curry made some improvements to them, like you being able to input a specific value for your transform operation, as well as the mouse wrapping around the 3D viewport while using them. Number 10. Improved editing of collision shapes. Before Kobe Y stepped in, collision shapes were always edited around the center. Now you can edit each side of a shape independently without constantly having to move the shape. Number 11. Improvements to 3D viewport. Kelly New made 3D node gizmos disappear. Well, as long as they're not selected at least. This greatly reduces clutter in the 3D editor. While Kelly New was added, they also added editor gizmo icons for decals, lightmap probes and fog volumes. This also adds support for selecting them by clicking on the editor icon. Number 12. General editor improvements. Thanks to the sync, you can now color folders in Godot's file panel in a specific color. If you ever had problems with getting lost in the sea of blue that is the file panel, this one is for you. When making resources unique, you can now pick which of its sub-resources will be made unique with it in this new dialog. Thank you, Kobe Y. The gradient editor had an overhaul by Meow Pio Pio. It now comes with, for example, snapping, an improved undo and redo system, and the color of the handle now responds better to what color is under it. Number 13. Asset Library Yuri Tsitsov made big improvements to the Asset Library. You can now select the target folder and what files you want to install and, more importantly, what files you don't want to install. Number 14. Project Manager Improvements Godot's Project Manager needed some work. Stary Abyss changed the layout of the buttons and made the project import workflow better. Number 15. Editor Interface is now a singleton. Yuri Tsitsov made the editor interface a globally accessible singleton. This is great for people who are making editor add-ons. Just like me. More on that on the upcoming workflow video. So subscribe. Number 16. 
graph edit rework. The graph edit thing Godot comes with received a huge rework. It was chopped up into multiple classes and also some other stuff was done, which I'm not going to touch on. Though the visual shader editor got some improvements, which is always nice. Number 17. Asset import improvements. You can now, thanks to Kobe Y, change the import type of a file without restarting the editor. You can now also playback animations in the import settings, thanks to Kaosus. Number 18. FSR 2.2 support and better TAA. Dario Samo added FSR 2.2 support and improved TAA by adding motion vectors to animated surfaces and GPU particles. Number 19. Better particles. Speaking of particles, QB Shea refactored the particle class and added, for example, a way to control the velocity with curves. Number 20. Thread support in script debugger. Since I'm always flamed when I try to pronounce Juan Linetsky, I'm going to say that this PR is by Redos. They added a way to debug threads in Godot's debugger. Number 21. GD script improvements. Ever wanted to have a statically typed for loop in GD script? Well, you couldn't, until Dadasev made it possible. You can now add type hints to the iterator of your for loop. They also added an add deprecated as well as an add experimental flag to be used in documents. Here's a quick tip for you. If you ever have an unstable custom class, just mark it as experimental. No one will complain. And that's it. With this video at least, there's a bunch of more cool stuff coming to Godot 4.2 that did not make it into this video due to time constraints. So be sure to check out the article I linked in the description for more info. If you want to know what's coming to Godot 4.3, check out my video on that. And oh yeah, like, subscribe and have a good day.